Welcome back to another episode of Live Darts TV. This is episode 10 and today we're joined with Paul Nicholson and Michael Smith. Welcome to a very special episode of Live Darts TV. We're live backstage at the O2 with the Premier League finals on the horizon, joined by bully boy Michael Smith. Michael, thanks for taking time out to join us. I know it's been a crazy schedule <laughs> for you. First of all, we're going to take you right back to your start of your career. 2010, your breakthrough year, UK Open, last 32, beating Peter Manley. Can you remember that far back? Very good. I think it was 6 3 or 6 4 won that game. Yeah. I lost out to Merking two games later. Yeah, but that breakthrough moment on TV must have been special. Yeah, yeah I always knew something was going to happen. It was just, I wish it would have gone further. But hopefully now, a lot of learning from them years. Bring it into this one as well. Definitely. From there, the 2013 World Youth Championship, being Ricky Evans, got your hands on your first major bit of silverware. Must have been pleasing looking at the names before that that had won the title. Yeah, of course, uh, seeing that Michael Van Gogh had been in all the finals, never won one. And it's me, James, Aaron, and then after me, there's been Keegan and Max. It was quite good with the quick lineup. Some of the players you don't see as often now, but some. So fighting back and coming back through them. Do you still give Michael some stick that he's never won that one? No, because he'll just tell me about all these he's won. <laughs> it, was the youth tour a good learning experience for you though? Yeah, it was good. It was, it was a bit hard because back then when I was, when I was in there, you'd have to play the men's and if you got past, if you got to the quarterfinals, you weren't allowed into the youths because it was on the same day. So if you went out before the quarters, you were allowed to play. And that was hard work going straight from that to a different tournament different mindset as well, I'm guessing, that you've just lost or whatever, yeah. and then you've got to get, try and pick yourself up again to go again. Yeah, uh, that's why that, that year when it was happening, I didn't care less. I, I, I was good, more good to I lost in the men's, I wasn't really bothered about the youth. And the, the year that I won it was my last year. That's why I focused solely on that as well. So I had to win it before we, I quit playing the youth. 2014, broken into the top 32 in the world, and the standout moment was obviously beating Phil Taylor at the Worlds, um, a game where it looked like it had drifted away from you, then all of a sudden a, flip, a flick of a switch and you were back in the game. Was that tough being so far behind at one point? I know, it was, it, oh, I was, went, lost the first set 3-0, got about one all, and then he just went, kept breaking the floor, and I think the last set, he made the mistake of the bull, because he won the bull and gave me the darts, and at 3 all, it was my darts in the last set. And uh, I think he missed darts at double to go 2-0 up in the last one. He checked out and then got to the decider, and went out in 13, I think, to win. Does that game still live long in your memory? Because it's shown everywhere. It's like Michael Smith has finally arrived on our stage because we all knew about your reputation as a youngster coming through and we finally saw that moment on a world stage. Yeah, I didn't... Phil didn't play his best, neither did I, but to get a win over him on, on his stage, it was the best thing ever. People still tell me now, is it your best ever match? I've never classed it as my favourite match to win. I've always classed winning the Youth Worlds or winning Europeans as my better matches. It was good on TV knowing that I beat the number one player in the world at the time. I can do it. From there, obviously 2016 picked for the Premier League. I know the first experience wasn't yeah. great. That, that very first night when your great friend Gary Anderson wasn't fit to play, yeah. did you get a choice whether you were going to play twice on that night or did they just tell you you were playing? Yeah, people were playing. Is that what it was? Yeah, Edward Zells. <laughs> I was in and I lost two games a week after and just couldn't get going. Got depressed over darts, I didn't want to play anymore. Me and all. I was going to say, the first Premier experience, did, was that hard to get over even after the Premier League had finished? Was it tough the yeah. rest of the year? Yeah, I, didn't, I don't think I won a game for four months. Just went out the first round every time. And it was hard, it did cripple me like, mentally as well. And just to get, like, get myself motivated to practice or do anything, it was hard work. Did Gary help you through that as well? Because I know you two are great friends off the hockey. Yeah, he used to text me a lot saying, don't it's only a game of darts, we were winning about. But it wasn't, it was, uh, I have to win to make a wedge. I have to win to pay my own bills, because it's only me that works in the house playing darts. So if I'm not winning, I'm not paying nothing. Obviously, you've got your chance again this year. Was that a, a great experience, getting the phone call to say you were in again, back in the big time? I didn't know. Um, what do you call it? She was watching the darts downstairs, the final. I was laying in bed. And uh, she come running upstairs saying the line must be announced. Put it on. But my TV must have been behind by what, literally five seconds. And my phone just went nuts. And that's the only way I found out. Just seeing it on the line. So I didn't actually know. And to get given that chance, it was unreal. Again, I thought, right, I've got a point to prove now. First year was dreadful. This year, I've got to put things right. Have you approached it differently at all? Yeah, just, I took it as a laugh last time. 
like an exhibition this this year I took it serious like it was it's a proper tournament it's not just an exhibition as such and it was it was just I practiced more hours I did more things through the day and just getting ready for it. Right, now it's 60 second challenge time. We have the official world record holder here. Mike, thanks for joining us. I know you're not great, but whatever time you can do it in yeah. would be amazing. Off you right. go, good luck. Should set up on the other one. Find it again. It's nice, it's pushing, but it's just so. Australia, it's good, nice and warm. It's a bit scary with uh, the snakes and spiders. It was quite good. Ideal day off. <sighs> Not done for a while. Uh, so out with the kids. Go and watch get United. Win the cup final against Chelsea. Be nice on Saturday. So yeah, for real. Anderson, Dover, Whiter. Good. Walking Dead. Soldiers. Best match. Uh, uh, friend Van Gogh and Trumpton in Aberdeen two years ago. And he got the world record average. Uh, my very first game I ever watched, 2007. Gary beating Phil Till in the ideal final. The world champs. Join us. Uh, chicken and rice. Um, well, anything else I can get my hand on? <laughs> Must be over the moon as well with the way it's gone. Finished second overall after 15 tough weeks. Obviously being ill as well and still yeah. managed to pick up wins. Yeah, it was difficult, but getting off to that start and I think it was winning the first four or five games. It was fantastic because then it took the pressure off from playing and, uh, well, not playing, it's just uh, trying to get wins. And once that pressure was off, it was relaxing and the, win, the wins come through really relaxing. What's been your favourite venue in this year's Premier League? Manchester. Quite nice in Manchester. Liverpool was pretty good because that's where I did Byron 7 0. I know, um, I think Manchester, Berlin was pretty good, massive. Dublin was loud. But I think Manchester's close to home. It took me 15 minutes to get there. As I say, it's your, almost your home venue, yeah. and it's where you get most support, I'm guessing. Yeah, well, they're still cheap for the players. Even in Liverpool, that's only 10 minutes for me as well. Still cheap for Barney, but... No, just being there meant more of my mates could come. Like, you don't ever come to watch, so they come down. A couple of my old school teachers. It's fun. <laughs> no, definitely. Obviously, from there, we've already touched on the Gary Anderson influence that's having you from a youngster. How did that relationship all come about from an early age? I think he, he come back to watch um, one, of them, one of the youth worlds, I think. Like the very first one I played in. And he just walking around looking for players. And he, he might have a captain of the sports, he might have been Dave Allen. And Dave Allen pushed uh, me and Adam up forward. And he took his arm from there. 
as I say, it must be nice having someone of that experience to, to call on at a young age. I know you've developed into yeah. a, a great player now, but from a young age, that must have been nice. Yeah, it was because uh, mum and dad used to have a lot of jobs just to send me around England. So I was in the PDC and I was only playing like the six UK Opens every year. That was it. So when uh, Gary took over, it get, meant I could go everywhere else then. And I, I, might able, I might have still been struggling in England now if he hadn't took over. But he yeah, helped me out massively. Just, I was just putting all the hard work. And Gary just let me forget about all my, uh, the other side of it, all the payment sides. So it's developed into a great friendship as well, because we see how close you two are on tour and on stage when after you've played each other and things like that. Yeah, he's good. Um, yeah, he's been like that older brother type thing. He's always there for us there. Oh, you need to do this and you do that, or times to take a step back and think about what you're doing. And he's always gives advice, advice, and yeah, it's, it's gone really good. Like, you have a laugh now, we share rooms when we're away and stuff like that. And we just argue like mad, but it's like friendly arguments as well. And it is good. Obviously, I'm going to take you back to this year's Worlds as well. From a neutral's point of view, you played in one of the games of the tournament, but does the Rob Cross miss double still still yeah, hurt? It does me, I didn't. 36, I never missed 36. And when that first out went in, I thought, right, game over. And then missed it, we went 3 all. And I missed three darts at the tops to get it 1 all in the, the last set. And I think he went out and went out in the 12 the leg after as well. I say one of the games of the tournament. I say just a shame you were on on the yeah. wrong end of it. Um, from there, I say World Series coming up as well. Could you ever imagine as a kid that you'd be travelling the world playing darts the way it's gone? Uh, not really. No, I didn't. I didn't really start playing darts. Till I was 15 anyway, so I wasn't. I didn't know what was happening in darts. So I was still young when they actually brought this in. So it was good to finally get. I think well, I could play in there. I could play in there. Because I did wait till I was 21 to play in the Desert Classic. He either turned 21 was the year they cancelled it. So I, I never actually go to Vegas. So to get selected for that one this year, to get to go to New Zealand, Australia again, looking forward to. And one place I'd never think of visit would be Shanghai. It's nice to get to go there. No, definitely. Obviously, you've got a young family. You're taking the family on the World Series yeah. with you. I'm there to work. I'm there to earn money, not spend it. <laughs> Fair one. Um, obviously, a lot of um, things coming up, Euro Tour, you playing absolutely everything. Are you going to take a leaf out of Gary's book and maybe pick and choose a little bit or are you still going to try and play in everything I, on the calendar? I, I try playing everything, but I think September, after World Series, I'm going to miss two or three. I'm gonna, I might have September off, I'm not sure. But every time I try to take time off, I have to go. It's like someone just pulls me back and says, no, you've got to turn up. You've got to go. I just like to play, I like to compete. I like to hopefully win to uh, tournaments. Is it tough juggling a young family with the growing demands of the tour? It is tough, but luckily enough, my missus, she's, she's great with it. She loves darts, my kids love darts. Well, Junior does, Casper no, no different. And the crazy on it, so they, they like, push me to play as well, push me to go. Junior wants to come, but sadly he's not old enough just yet. So he'll be here this tomorrow. As I say, I see on um, Twitter you posted a picture of you and Junior playing. That must be really nice that yeah. you can bond like that as well. Yeah, I'll go out and do my practice with Ian White for the day. And then he's at school, he gets home from school. We'll have an hour, two hours, an hour board at home. And then I'll go back out with them, do another two hours on my own. I say, away from darts, do you follow the circuit at all or not? Just switch off when you're not I can't, playing? I can't stand, I can't watch darts, I don't like it. Like, I, I always say to everyone, I, say, I do not like darts, so well, if you worked in a, a shop, would you go back home and watch someone stacking a shelf on TV? So I don't want to watch my job on TV if I'm not in it. And I've, never, I've always been like that. Fair enough. Away from the board, how does Michael Smith relax? What do you like to do away from darts? Sleep. <laughs> no, uh, I don't know. Uh, when I'm away from darts, I'm still playing darts. Yeah. Like, I play league matches three nights a week. If I've not got nothing on the weekend, I'll play Super League on a Sunday. I still do my five hours there practicing by juniors at school. When we are at home, just chill out with baby and he'll play games on his iPad. Go and sit around the pond in the garden or do and I'll be just building his park now. So now we can go and play on his park in the garden as well. Nice. Do you still like playing league darts and local darts, giving yeah. something back and things like that? Yeah, I played last night. Because yeah, the uh, team was short, my mate was working. So he couldn't get back. Uh, so I had to stay a bit late. So that's why I didn't get here late last night. Just so I could help the team out. Won my game and then left straight to you. Looking ahead to the rest of 2018, what would be your one ambition or one main goal for the rest of the year? Major. Put a trophy on that shelf. I've got all, got all the other trophies. I've got UK Opens, I've got uh, Pro Tours, Europeans, there's a major one missing now. As I say, you, we, we all believe and we all know there's a major there. It's just when it happens. Yeah. Would you like to beat Michael or Gary in the final if you could pick? If I'm going to win one, either, I'm not bothered. As long as I get to lift it. I'd like, I'd like to play Gary, I think, just because we're best mates as well. 
I'm a bit gutted that we've got each other in the semis tomorrow, but in the other sense is at least one of us guaranteed the final at least one of us could win the trophy. No, definitely. Well, wish you all the best of luck for tomorrow, Cheers. Michael, and pleasure. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, mate. Cheers, sir. Right, Mike, second challenge of the day. How many balls can you get in a minute? Good luck, mate. All the 25. Balls. <laughs> No black wash out. We, we have had none scored, so it's fine. Who was it? Chris Dober? Uh, Wayne. Wayne mm. got Nola. Why is it Wayne's win, Chris? <laughs> I actually didn't one more on the Canigo one. <laughs> Missed it. That's that sweet tin? Yeah. Yeah, good effort. Medical. We're in for one more. My. Another one. That's it, well done, buddy. Spray effort. Hi, I'm Michael Smith, this is my tall tale. Uh, went out at Barnsley, had a few drinks, and I was saying to a um, taxi guy, was the hotel, we took me back in the hotel, and he says, drop me off near this wall, the wall wasn't about two foot high, they so jump over that and the hotel's just across the road. But he forgot to tell me the other side of the wall was about a ten foot drop. I went sliding down the wall and they broke my ankles, laid up for a couple of hours in bed, and I even missed the tournament the day after, because Gary thought it would be funny to start twisting my ankle down, I had my foot up in bed. Thank you for watching Live Darts TV. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Live Darts TV on YouTube.